During the Democratic primaries in 2019, Kamala Harris, of all people, described pharma executives as, quote, nothing more than some high-level dope dealers who should, quote, be held accountable. Then a few months later, she went further than that. Harris suggested the drug companies were so evil they might produce a COVID vaccine that wound up hurting people. Quote, if Donald Trump tells us we should take it, I'm not taking it, Harris said. And then other Democrats, including Andrew Cuomo, then the governor of New York, said the very same thing. But here's the amazing part. The second Joe Biden took office, talk, talk like that stopped immediately. Never has a tune changed faster. Kamala Harris, who just months before had called drug companies dope dealers, suddenly sounded like the chief marketing officer at Pfizer. At one point, Harris announced that volunteers would go, quote, door to door to promote Pfizer's products. Never in our history have federal officials touted a publicly held company more aggressively than the Biden administration touted Pfizer. And as a result, Pfizer's stock price exploded. Its executives made billions. Gone was any suggestion that the drug companies might be capable of doing anything wrong ever. Instead, the media and the Biden administration lauded pharma executives as moral heroes. And some of their products are life-saving. That is true. But the bigger truth we are now learning is more complicated than that. In just the past few weeks, serious, very serious questions have emerged about some of the most widely prescribed drugs in America, very much including the COVID vaccines. But we want to begin tonight with what in any normal period would be front page news around the world. It turns out the entire premise behind the most commonly prescribed antidepressant drugs appears to be completely wrong. These drugs are known as SSRIs. They're ubiquitous. Between 1991 and 2018, total SSRI prescriptions in the U.S. rose by more than 3,000 percent. The number of prescriptions for the most common SSRIs hit 224 million last year. 224 million prescriptions in a country of 330 million people. In other words, you know dozens of people who are taking SSRIs. You may be taking them right now. And yet for decades, there have been strong indications that there is a problem with these drugs. And the most obvious is this. Antidepressants are supposed to cure depression. That's why they're prescribed. And yet over the same period that SSRI prescriptions have risen 3,000%, the suicide rate, maybe the most reliable indicator of all of depression, has not fallen in the United States. In fact, the suicide rate has jumped by 35%. That's a huge increase. That's a lot of dead people. Now, drug makers admit that their products may be part of the reason for the increase in suicide. The makers of Prozac, for example, concede that young people who take that drug have an increased risk of suicide compared to those who took a placebo. Think about that for a second. A drug that's supposed to make you less sad may make it more likely that you will kill yourself. How is that allowed? Well, it's been allowed because virtually no one has said a word about it. One person who did say something about it a long time ago was the actor Tom Cruise. All the way back in 2005, he had a very famous appearance on the Today Show. You may remember it. Here it is. Here we are today where I talk out against drugs and psychiatric abuses of electric shocking people, mm -hmm. okay, against their will, of drugging children with them not knowing the effects of these drugs. Do you know what Adderall is? Do you know Ritalin? Do you know now that Ritalin is a street drug? Do you understand that? Aren't there examples, and might not Brooke Shields be an example of someone who benefited from one of those drugs? All it does is mask the problem, Matt. And if you understand the history of it, it masks the problem. That's what it does. That's all it does. You're not getting to the reason why. There is no such thing as a chemical imbalance. Drugs aren't the answer. That these, these drugs are very dangerous. They're mind-altering, antipsychotic drugs. And there are ways of doing it without that so that we don't end up in a brave new world. So Cruz said a few things. One, maybe you shouldn't trust the pharma companies and just hand your children whatever they're producing and hope for the best. Two, there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance in your brain that causes depression. He said that. And three, these drugs mask the real problems. You're suffering for a real reason that drugs can't fix provocative statements. How did the country respond to this? Well, everyone in the media agreed, Tom Cruise is crazy. He's in a cult. Shut up. 
A lot of people thought that. We may even have thought that. But then more information kept coming out that made Tom Cruise look a little less crazy. In 2015, researchers from the scientific journal BMJ found that, quote, some birth defects occur two to three and a half times more frequently, a lot more frequently, among the infants of women treated with SSRIs early in pregnancy. Wow, that's a huge problem. Ignored. In the same journal in 2020, researchers found that, quote, post-SSRI sexual dysfunction is under-recognized and can be debilitating both psychologically and physically. Well, that's kind of a problem, too. If it steals your sex drive, maybe it's stealing your soul? Hmm, no, ignore it. Only cult members care. Then last year, researchers in Sweden found that, quote, there may be an increased hazard of violent crime during SSRI medication in a small group of patients. It may exist across age groups and throughout treatment periods, and it possibly persists for up to 12 weeks after treatment discontinuation. So even after you stop taking the drugs, you may be impotent, infertile, violent. But at least the drugs cure the chemical imbalance in your brain that causes your depression. That was the selling point. What a great piece of marketing that was. You've got a chemical imbalance in your brain. You need these drugs. And so hundreds of millions of prescriptions every year for these drugs. Well, in what seemed like news to us, last week we learned that actually SSRIs don't cure a chemical imbalance in your brain. So the acronym SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. The theory was, has been for 30 years, that depressed people have an imbalance of serotonin in their brains. They have a chemical imbalance. If you give them more serotonin, then they become less depressed and happy. They're less likely to kill themselves, right? But it turns out that serotonin deficiencies are not the reason people get depressed. That's not just a guess, it's now officially science. This new finding comes from University College London, just completed a long and huge study on the relationship between depression and serotonin. It was published in the journal Molecular Psychiatry. Here's what the lead author of that study, Joanna Moncrief, said about the findings. Quote, I think we can safely say, after a vast amount of research conducted over several decades, there is no convincing evidence that depression is caused by serotonin abnormalities, particularly by lower levels or reduced activity of serotonin. What? That was the whole premise of the drug which virtually the entire American population was taking on their doctor's advice. And by the way, the drug companies made billions off those drugs. So first we were told that SSRIs would save lives. Now we learn they don't actually work as intended. In fact, the whole idea behind the drug was completely wrong. And yet, and here's the best part, People are ignoring this news and the drugs are still being prescribed. How can that happen in a country based on science? Well, as it turns out, and this is the real point, that happens all the time.